I'm gonna ask you a question. Who would win this battle? Commander Shepard or John 117. Spartan versus N7. Master Chief versus Spectre. Off the bat, we got three different shepherds with three different backgrounds. Does that really matter though? Let's talk shepherd. You have three different backgrounds to pick from and one of them is Spacer Shepherd. Now, Spacer had both parents in the Alliance military and you spent most of your years on ships and stations as they moved from post to post. And when you came of age, you followed in their footsteps and enlisted. It all makes perfect sense. We also have Earthborn Shepherd, who was orphaned earlier on and raised on the streets. To escape a life of petty crimes and underworld gangs, he or she enlisted in the Alliance military. Very clever. No, actually, I take that back. That's just logic. But it shows you Shepard has common sense, which we all which know, we all know isn't, isn't so common. common. And finally, we have the colonist. At the age of 16, slavers raided Shepard's colony, slaughtering family and friends. Saved by a passing alliance patrol, they clearly left an impression because he or she enlisted a few years later. Now, a quick roundup. Personally for me, Earthborn and in particular Colonist has an emotional weight to it. As there's a clear motivation driven by trauma and hardship. But you could also argue Spacer grew up around the military. The military is his and her home. And it makes perfect sense that one of the top graduates would have that connection with the Alliance. But regardless of the backstory, Shepard still remains the same and enlist. And everything in the game from here on in is more or less parallel for all three. Which goes to really show Shepard was always going to be a born leader. To an extent, you could argue his calling or her calling was to join the Alliance and to put those qualities to good use. And using those qualities to save the galaxy is a pretty good use. Shepard has multiple faces and all those faces gets the job done. Let's talk training. The Interplanetary Combat Academy, sometimes called End School, End School or the Villa, recruits officers from every branch of Earth's military to partake in gruesome courses at the Villa Militar in Rio de Janeiro. The trainees participate in scenarios experienced by the elite units of most land-based armies. Candidate may be trained more than 20 hours a day, leading small units into combat zones of a hostile terrain with little to no sleep or food. Trainees who do well are awarded and designated the rank N1. Subsequent courses of N2 through 6 are held off planet and include classes and trainings in zero-g combat, such as Parachuting, jetpack flight, combat diving, linguistics, close quarters combat training, frontline trauma care for human and alien biology, assault procedures. These guys don't play around. The highest grade of training and seven provides actual combat experience in conflict zones throughout the galaxy. Invitees are given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. You're then awarded the N7 designation. If you survive these scenarios in an admirable and effective fashion. I repeat, these guys don't play around. And finally, to be a Spectre, no actual prior qualification is needed. But your experience, your skill and your character are all taken into consideration and only the best may actually obtain this because this essentially means you represent your people and the galaxy understands you are a representation of your people. This allows you to circumvent the law in order to get things done. It's done. To an extent, you are the judge, the jury and the executioner. Shepard is the first and only human Spectre, for now. Tila Vassir, Special Tactics and Recon. As Spectre? 
You're one of our most famous operatives. Might even get you to sign my chest plate. Go for it. Go for it. And among specters, he's regarded highly. Some of Shepard's notable achievements are destroying the race known as the Collectors, taking down thousands of Geth or wiping them out completely. There's also saving the Citadel Council, which could be perceived as ensuring stability in the galaxy, destroying or controlling the Reapers that have harvested probably trillions of lives over a billion years, effectively stopping the cycle. That's impressive. That's, That's impressive. impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. But the main and most dangerous weapon is the skill known as Tokno Jutsu, where Shepard talks his way out of conflict or making difficult decisions. This involves helping to facilitate the cure of the genophage by pushing Morden in the right direction, bringing the Quarians and the Get together, effectively stopping the civil war. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. Or saving the Rachni Queen. Rachni. Rachni. That's, impressive. That's impressive. Talking to this thin and more importantly, uniting the galaxy. We don't even have a united world so you can imagine how difficult that would be. Not for Shepard. Shepard is king. Shepard is queen. Shepard is the shit. And on the other side, we got John 117, Master Chief. Forced and indoctrinated into the Spartan 2 program at a young age, John lives and breeds the military. He is the definition of the perfect super soldier. His achievements to this day are well documented. He is the savior to the people. He is the demon to the covenant. He is paragon and renegade all in one stoic form. And while he is not a specter, don't let the titles deceive you. If you need something done, you can send a Spartan, sure, or you can just send John. John 117. Just send Master Chief. Ask and you shall receive. Just send Master Chief. Before moving on, Get a quick message from our sponsor, please. No, I'm just fucking with you. Let's keep it moving. I'm fucking with you. Let's keep it moving. Let's talk biography. From the age of 13 and upwards, he showed proficiency in leading teams, critical thinking and great tactical awareness among his peers. He wasn't the fastest or the strongest, but he was always there in the conversation. And taken as a whole, he was the best. That was enough for Dr. Halsey and Chief Mendes to designate him as group leader of the Spartans. And when finally augmented, this greatly improved his speed and strength and durability. Add that to the fact that he's able to think on his feet and lead. And what position are you in? You're in a winning position. To give an example of the physical strength he possessed post augmentation, during an altercation with the senior members of the ODSTs, a 14 year old John was able to take down four military trained adults in hand to hand combat. A blow that caved one of the members skull, fractured another's spine, caved in another's pelvic bone and a direct hit to the chest which caused him to have myocardial infraction. That's a heart attack. It was described as lambs to the slaughter, all in 5 seconds. Let's do a head to head. Training wise, John is proficient in any weapon and deadly in hand to hand combat. Unlike other marines, due to his enhanced physical strength, he's able to do more. Let's ignore the type 2 gravity hammer for a second, which weighs around 38.7 kilograms. And remember, Chief is well capable of lifting 3 times his body weight. If you do the numbers, that puts him at around 390 kg. 390 kg. Again, let's ignore that and actually look at some feet and direct comparisons to Shepard's universe. Krogans in Mass Effect typically stand over 7 feet tall and weigh at least 150 kilos, with the average weighing between that and capping off at around 200 kg. Of course, there are the exceptions that could find themselves at around 362, but those are the exceptions. Now let's compare them to the Brutes, which stand up to 8 to 9 feet tall on average. With a body mass of 680 kilograms, they're capable of delivering crushing blows in hand to hand combat, and they are extremely dangerous in close quarters. At meet to long range, they're extremely dangerous as they're proficient in using weapons, but it's the physical endurance that makes them dangerous. They are prone to fits of berserk rage, which could ultimately give an opponent the upper hand, tactically. 
as there's a bit of mindlessness in this. Or not. Or not. If you throw in the elites that average 7 to 8 feet and weigh around 139 to 178 kg, you get a better picture of what Chief deals with, and by default what Shepard can deal with. And those numbers don't lie, Chief has a clear advantage in a direct head to head against Shepard. One thing to note is the ability to use biotics will certainly help a Krogan. Brutes and Chief don't necessarily have an answer to that. Throwing the Krogan's endurance and healing ability and you start to realize depending on the Krogan, and that's a big dependent, Chief might struggle. Not lose, certainly not lose, but struggle. That's an exception though. And I'm not saying Chief takes down every Krogan easily, I'm just saying he doesn't lose to any Krogans. The numbers don't lie. So what we can ascertain from this is from a physical point of view and close quarters, Chief takes down Shepard. Hands down. There's not really a debate here. Shepard has been known for a few feats of his own, such as dodging bullets at point blank range, headbutting a Krogan. But this also happened. And we know this what if you miss? also happened. I won't. Let's talk weapons. Mass Effect gives you a wide range of weapons to combat your opponents, such as the M8 Avenger, which has a reasonably high firing rate and low recall, but also outputs low damage. There's also the M96 Matok, which is a pretty well rounded assault rifle as it incorporates a high firing rate with extreme accuracy, as well as dealing high damage. The only downside here is the smaller magazine size and spare ammo capacity, meaning you burn through bullets fast and need a decent secondary weapon to fall back on. There are many others as well such as the M15, Vindicator, M76, M23, Katana or M37 Falcon. On the Halo side we have the tried and true MA40 with a high firing rate, a 36 round magazine and decent handling, making it a versatile close range weapon. We also have the VK47 Commando which sits between the assault and battle rifle, the Hydra which is a hybrid of a rocket and grenade launcher. There's honestly a lot to pick from and there should be. But for the purpose of this battle, it's not necessarily about who has the better guns or weapons per se. Both are highly proficient and Shepard could easily find himself using the MA40 and Chief could find himself using the M8 Avenger. Also, this is ultimately to test each character, not exactly what tools they might find on the battlefield. Now, there's a lot of debate and back and forth on which universe has the better weapons, but it's also extremely dependent on what classes and build one is using. An assault rifle is useless against a sniper in the right situation, and a sniper is useless against a shotgun in close quarters. And if we start talking about classes and builds, then Shepard's arsenal is just ridiculous. He, she can pull from so many different sources and abilities. The Biotic Charge, Nova, Pull, Shockwave, Singularity, Throw, Wrap, Combat Drone, Cryoblast, Overload, Incinerate, Sabotage, Sentry Torrent, Tactical Cloak, Tech Armor. We can go on and on but we're gonna standardize it. We know Chief takes close quarters so it's about the mid and distance. So who wins? Well it's ultimately a battle of endurance and landscape, it's ultimately a story of the terrain. Shepard has to essentially keep Chief away while breaking down his shields and he does a good job at doing this. The issue here is Chief is extremely mobile on the battlefield. He has the ability to reach places Shepard can't. He's a lot more versatile due to the boost jumps he possesses, allowing him to be more flexible around his environment. As I mentioned earlier, Shepard has the tactical knowledge to keep Chief away but Chief also has the same so it becomes a bit of a stalemate. A sort of battle of attrition as Chief chases Shepard while taking damage. So it comes down to certain abilities. Biotics do a good job at assisting Shepard along with the other gadgets and if Chief does get close enough, Shepard does have the ability to use the biotic charge to retreat and that's key. Distance is key for Shepard. Here's the thing though. The whip changes everything changes everything. Now don't misunderstand, I don't predict a situation where Chief manages to latch onto Shepard. That's just not going to happen. But he closes the gap for sure. Shepard can back out with the biotic charge but 
there's an ETA on that. This doesn't. It's minimal. And in the process of Chief getting closer, Shepard can throw his whole arsenal at Chief, yes. And it will do some damage, of course. But remember, the armor, it changes everything. This is the same armor that took a nuke. The same armor that did this. The same armor that came through the atmosphere. Is that game? Is that game? Maybe. You see, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. But both are extremely talented. Both have amazing skill sets. One always relies on himself to get the job done. The other galvanizes people for support. And while that's a vital skill in itself, this is a one-to-one. -one. one of them is just a little bit faster, much stronger and maybe more training and experience on the battlefield. And it might not actually mean nothing. One is also extremely lucky. And maybe that's just enough. Master Chief wins. Now, is there a universe where Shepard wins? Well, yeah, there's a galaxy. He wins in Andromeda. If Shepard had the ability to switch classes on the fly like the writers do in Andromeda, then this becomes easy. An opponent that can prepare for close to mid to long range is extremely dangerous. They'll always be more flexible. They'll always be a step ahead on strategy and tactics. Now throwing the ability to dash and reach those high places that were initially difficult and you take out Chief's advantage. The hook is still there, but it just isn't as dangerous as Shepard is able to retreat faster. It takes out John's advantage and it means a lot more. And that's probably enough. Rudimentary creatures of blood and flesh, you touch my mind, fumbling in ignorance. Standing. What are they doing here? Making a mistake. 